I remember when we were starting to work on this, when we had as our materials, we had, I had a copy of his, Leon's working score, which I treasure, right, with all his right. little the sketches. The original, art, the original yes, one. Yes, the original yeah. for the first performance in 78. Um, with little pictures of the bells that he wanted, mm -hmm. the kind of texture, and since we both knew him so well, we know that he was always going for this, something that you can't express, this, yeah. this, my husband, Scott Nickeren, said he was once working on a string quartet with, with uh, Leon, and, and, and he said, Leon, what do you mean by this marking here? And I can't read it. And Leon looked at it and he said, make it sound like a lush green forest. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I always think when I'm puzzled by something in the score. You know? He always wanted to get there. Where, the, where you're away from, you know that there's mystery around you, you're surrounded by beauty and mystery and that there's something there that you don't quite understand. To be able to express mm. that, that's one of the specialties of a flute, of yeah. course. Well, he had this uncanny ability to, to sing what he wanted, because he had this sense of improvisatory feel, the way he phrased, the way he sang his phrases. Remember the picture on the front of the score, yeah. which he carried under his arm for all the first rehearsals, um, in which I now have, and I, I must say, I'm glad I have it because I've referred to it countless times yeah, with yeah, a magnifying yeah. glass to get his, what did he mean yeah, by that? Yeah, yeah. The shimmering of the bells, which is something in also other pieces of his, it's a certain type of gathering together of the bell sounds, so they don't go like this, but this, yeah. this. Yeah, he wrote an unusual, because yeah. I think he wrote bell tree, which is a normal he, percussion instrument, uh -huh. but he wrote and small silver bells. Yeah. So he had this kind of, and, and he was like that. He would have these sounds in his head, and he'd almost have to create the way in which that sound was going to be realized, yeah. which had never been done before. <laughs> what does small silver bells mean? I know. So we'll have some it's fun finding some small forest, silver bells. Yes, exactly. Forest. Small silver bells. <laughs> The way, and the way he, when he would sing, um, num, num, remember that? Yeah. So that when he would sing the first, la, um, 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 with his hands too, um, 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 like that. So the, yeah, kind of the sounds would go out into the air. And that's just so hard to play on a flute. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's more close to the human voice, and I think it's hard. Difficult to play on a piano, too, mm -hmm. but he was able to do it. Yeah. He, he yeah. could play he his own quite, sounds. Yeah, quite a good pianist. Yeah. Yeah. What a voice. What, I'm so glad that we have a chance to keep this unique voice alive. That he'll be speaking in Jordan Hall. That he'll be alive because it's up to us. He wrote those words, he wrote the music, he wrote all of it on a many pieces of paper but and then he passed but now because we're playing his music he's alive yeah yeah what a wonderful blessing mm -hmm. for us to be mm -hmm. able to do that